came of the, I guess you want to call it John Wall and Victor Oladipo era. Um, early on, it was kind of so awkward moments, but in the in the fourth quarter, there was some big time players on on offense and defense. How was that from your vantage point? Just the last six or seven minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah, Kelly, you're very totally right about how disjointed it was in the first half. And it takes guys a, a minute to learn how to play together. And this was just <laughs> just game one. So it took them three quarters to kind of figure it out a little bit. And the uh, fourth quarter was good. You know, they were um, kind of figuring it out, how, how they can make each other better and how they can let each other play to their strengths. Um, getting the ball up the floor a little quicker, I think, helps both guys. Um, if we have options ahead of the ball and aren't playing against a set defense, or uh, if they can have some sort of action where they're playing together, that is good stuff for us. So it's a work in progress for sure. And as you saw in the first half, it was very much disjointed, but they came together in the second half and, and uh, did a great job on both ends of the floor. The defense was really, really good in the second half. Adam Spolin. Even on the defense, they went from 14 second chance points and 10 offensive rebounds in the first half to two offensive rebounds and no second chance points in the second half. Did you feel like your initial defense was pretty solid the entire game and just the, the difference was in the second half you cleaned up the boards? Uh, yes and no. The first half I was definitely disappointed in our ability to get loose balls, 50-50 balls, um, and the rebounding game. And we mentioned it at halftime because I believe at the time they had 10 offensive rebounds and we had 12 defensive rebounds. So um, that obviously is not a recipe for success and we needed to change it. And, you know, Cuz was great as far as getting, getting the rebounds and, and making sure that when they missed, we could secure it and go because we still want to play with pace, but we got to get the rebound first and it has to be a group effort. I mean, Dave Nawaba did a great job on the boards as well. And that's got to be a focus of ours because our defense is becoming pretty good, you know, on the ball and the pick and rolls. And obviously Beal is a, is a hard guy to guard and Westbrook is hard to guard. But if we do our job on those guys, we got to come up with the basketball. And that was definitely one of our main um, talking points at halftime. Jonathan Fagan. Another game, the third in a row, where you got a big boost off the bench. How much of that is just these guys have been playing basketball, or they've been playing it together, uh, as opposed to just about everybody else who was on the court tonight? Yeah, I didn't even think of it that way, but yeah, that, that's a good way to kind of say it. Um, they, they've been here the whole time. They've been playing together for the most part for the whole time, whether they've been in the starting lineup together or coming off the bench together and they do have a little bit of continuity and uh, they, that group really has a defensive mindset and they get us going defensively. So um, as you see what Nawab was a plus 20 and Sterling was a plus 22 in, in his minutes. And it really is the defensive end because then we can go and, and uh, create some offensive opportunities just off our pace. Do you like using them in a small ball lineup or is that something that you have to now because you're down one center both I, I like it and i have to right now but um you know uh we got to figure out a way to to kind of do both because the small ball is, is good and um but obviously cuz is playing great and, and christian's playing well too so gotta figure it out thank you ali kambajani Hey, Steven, uh, with how much emphasis uh, team defense is put on in maintaining the shell, especially getting back quick in transition, how important is it for your offense to attack early? And were you happy with how John and Victor attacked um, in transition today? Yeah, it's very important for us to uh, attack early. And we're trying to get pass ahead so we can kick it ahead and um, attack early so we're not dribbling the ball up every possession. And we didn't really do that as much today. So it's going to be up to me to kind of watch the film tonight and to get that figured out because we do need to play with better pace. One of those guys are on the floor and uh, I got to give them away to, to do it. I also have to 
uh, watch film with them so they can see the opportunities where maybe we weren't running uh, with vision one or running with intention to get ahead of the ball so we can attack. And they're both such good attackers um, when they get it that we have to make sure that that's a part of what we do. Thank you. Crystal Saltis. Hello, coach. Tonight, you allowed 36 points on defense. Uh, the Wizards made 20 turnovers and you had uh, 13 steals. What these numbers mean about your effort tonight and how important was uh, the presence of DeMarcus Cousins on your game plan? Yeah, Cousins is always a big part of the game plan, um, especially as a starter. But his rebounding tonight was huge. And then the threes that he made kind of separated the game. You know, it was five, three, seven, and then uh, he made a three and got it to 10, I think, and he made another three and we were um, pretty good to, to have a chance to win the game. So he, he was great. But the defensive effort in the, in the second half to hold that team to 36, and they're a very good offensive team to force the turnovers that we forced and um, get 24 points off those turnovers is really big for us because like I said, right now our offense is a little bit disjointed, so creating turnovers so we can play a little bit faster is uh, is good for us. Ben DeBose. Um, with regards to Cousins, you mentioned obviously how well he played tonight, and honestly these past three games with him in the starting lineup. What's different about him now that he's got the starters minutes, and how do you translate that to the bench once – Christian comes back, I assume that's relatively soon. How do you take the comfort level that DeMarcus has shown you the last three games and transfer that to uh, the bench role in a few days? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do. But I think the fact that he's had some success um, over these last three games will help him moving forward and um, making sure that he has enough um, – time on the floor to to, uh, to play well and making sure that we're doing things so he can play with strengths. Um, you know, it's just, it's a harder role coming off the bench. It just is. And uh, when you're a starter and you're giving given more leeway and your uh, minutes are up and you're not playing behind Christian Wood, who is really playing well, it's a lot easier for, for Cuz to, as a starter. But to, to have that talent, to have that grit, to have that defensive intensity and size and rebounding coming off our bench, it really makes us deep. So, um, yeah, hopefully the, the success that he has can translate to um, his position coming off the bench. And we're just going to have to uh, work on making sure that he gets the minutes that he, uh, so he can do it. We'll take two more. Kelly Eco. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about Daniel House. Obviously, offensively, he was kind of rusty. You haven't not played in so long. But defensively, how did you see that? Because it seemed like he was very aggressive at the point of attack. He he switched well. He had his hands out. And how was that for you just seeing him progress defensively? Yeah, it was great to see him on the floor. I didn't realize he hadn't played since our second game against Sacramento. That seems like forever ago. So for him to come out and um, after just one practice with the team and – really just take the defensive role and, and do a great job with it. You know, the offense will come, but he was one of those guys that we had out there to uh, kind of spark us defensively, and he'll only get better from uh, as we go forward. And last question, Adam Wexler. Coach, just thinking back to what you were just saying with DeMarcus uh, going to the, back to the bench eventually, how noteworthy is it for you that Eric was able to string all these starts together, then go to the bench tonight and just continue doing what he's been doing? Yeah, yeah, that was great. That was great. And hopefully it'll be the same for Cuz. You know, that's a really good point. Because um, Eric had been starting and playing well and having the ball come to him. And, um, you know, coming off the bench is different and, and harder. And, uh, he just stepped right in and continued doing the things that he that he does, which is put pressure on the defense, make shots, really get off, get um, do a good job on the defense. Then, but he got to the free throw line, and, and um, as you're kind of teetering or the the lead is going down, 
and we get into the bonus, uh, that really helps. And he is just a downhill guy who can put uh, a ton of pressure on the defense as a starter or a backup. So his, his scoring punch off the, off the bench really makes us pretty deep with, you know, Nawaba and House and Brown and eventually Cuz. It will be a pretty deep team. Hello, DeMarcus. Congratulations. Nice hoodie. I would like to ask you how how refreshing for you is uh, another double double uh, performance and what it means this win, especially with the way that you won tonight. Um, I think the team has continued to come together. Uh, we're on the right path right now. We got a lot of momentum. Um, playing good, inspired basketball. Uh, chemistry is increasing with each game. I think we get better with each game. Um. We're finding that flow within our team. So uh, I think it's coming together at the right time. Christy Reichen. Marcus, after uh, seeing what John Wall's been through over the past uh, couple of years, what is it like for you to see him tonight playing against his former team and having such a good game? I don't expect anything less. Um, I've been knowing this guy a long time, and uh, I've seen his approach to big games and, and games that, you know, have some type of importance to him. So, uh, I've seen him perform every time at a high level. So, uh, like I said, I don't expect anything less. Tim McMahon. Hey, DeMarcus, what was your uh, what was your take on that little interaction between Russ and uh, and, and John Wall that led to the double T's? Um, that's nothing. Um, just two competitors. Uh, trash talking is a part of the game. As much as they don't want it to be, it is. Um, just, just two guys with, you know, a lot of passion behind their craft, um, speaking their mind. So nothing more, nothing less. Two alphas. Ryan Bearfield. Well, Marcus, who can you uh, attribute the concentrated effort on the three-point uh, defense that you all have? This is the second game in a row you've had, you all have held an opponent to under 20% shooting from the three-point line. Uh, ask that question one more time. I'm sorry. I, I was just asking, who do you all attribute this to? Who on the coaching staff has taken the, the effort to sh um, for you all to play better three-point defense? You gave a 46% in Detroit, but against Dallas and tonight, y'all y'all held them to under 20%. Um, I credit the entire coaching staff. Uh, they, they've been very detailed on the areas we need to improve in. And, um, and just the guys in the locker room's willingness to, you know, correct those mistakes. It's a combination, but uh, credit to the entire coaching staff. I think they've done an incredible job all year with preparing us. So, uh, um, like I said, I think things are just coming together at the right time. Ali Kambijani. Hey, DeMarcus, uh, last three games you've been starting, your numbers have increased. Uh, playing time obviously is there as well, but what do you attribute to this, you know, improvement in, in your play in terms of, Scoring output, three-point shooting, and defense. Um, confidence. Um, confidence is so important. It's so important in this game. Um, you can go train for hours and hours and hours. If you don't have the confidence to back that training, it's damn important. So, um, you know, my confidence is increasing. Um, I'm getting my legs underneath me. I'm believing in my abilities to go out there and, you know, do certain things. I'm believing in my body to you know, carry the load. So uh, it's just a combination of things that, or, or hurdles I, I feel like I had to, you know, get over the, or mental hurdles I had to get over to, you know, perform at a certain level. So, uh, and, and how does I'm this, not, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm completely there yet, but uh, I'm definitely on the right path. How does this help you when Christian comes back and, you know, when he starts back up again and you have to come off the bench, does, does this run help you in that regard? Um. I don't know. Um, we'll see how that you know, scenario plays out. But um, all I can do is be ready when my name is called, and uh, that's what I plan on doing. Hey, John, um, obviously, with this being the first game with you and the Victor, um, just can you explain the fourth quarter? It seemed like you guys made a, a number of big-time players on both ends of the floor in the fourth quarter. Um, just trying to pick each other out. You know what I mean? Me trying to get my legs back from missing five games, and then my first time having an opportunity to play with Vic. And like I told him, I mean, when you got the ball, be aggressive, be that score, create for us. You know, when times when I got, I do the same. And I think we just trying to feed off each other and just trying to get better 
But um, when the game counted, we came up with big plays on both ends of the floor, and that helped us, like, extend our lead a little better. Jonathan Fagan. John, what did it mean to you to have a game like that and a finish like that against the Wizards? Um, it was great. And, I mean, we know that team is better than what they have because a lot of guys have been out um, with COVID. So, you know, probably when we go to D.C., it's going to be a different game with Rui being there and the, the rookie guy they drafted. And then, you know, that, especially Bertans, you know, I mean, he means a lot to their team. And spacing the floor for those guys. And then especially Thomas Bryant, who's playing at a high level. And uh, sorry that he was out for it with his ACL injury. But, you know what I mean? And then also my guy, Ish. You know, I mean, those guys been missing a lot of pieces tonight, and they still made the game early on. We just found ways to get stopped in the fourth quarter, and then we made some tough shots. You feel like you proved something tonight? It wasn't really nothing about proving nothing for me. You know, I know how hard I worked the last two years. Um, I just wanted to go into this game of just playing aggressive and playing at a high level and getting my legs back. Uh, most important thing for me was getting the win. I mean, no matter how well I played or did, if we didn't get the win, I wasn't going to be satisfied with it. Thank you. Tim McMahon. Hey, John, what was the discussion between you and Russ that uh, led to the double technicals? Uh, trash talking. I mean, that's what two competitive guys do. You know what I mean? Um, Russ been kicking my ass for years. <laughs> only, this is only my third win, I think, against Russ since I've been in the league. So, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a hell of a talent. Um, I know he's dealing with injuries the same I was, and we're just trying to keep, keep getting better and trying to lead our team. But uh, just two competitive guys that trash talk. You know what I mean? This ain't the first time we've trash talked before, and uh, we know how good he, how good he could be. What what was his trash talk when they were down double figures? Just basic basketball trash talk. That's all it was. Nothing personal. Chris Raikin. <clears throat> John, there in the fourth quarter when you scored the five points and then uh, dished it to Victor for the three, and they called a timeout. Can you um, describe your emotions in that moment? You seemed r really pumped up and really excited. Yeah, because I was sitting. I was on the minute restriction, so I had to sit to the seven minute mark to come back in. And I was itching to get back in in the fourth quarter. Um, I wanted to play, and especially against the team, my old team. Um, and that was, I think we kind of separated ourselves right there. We went up and we scored eight straight, and they got got three stops in a row. And kind of gave us like a 12 or 14 point lead. And um, just counted one, two, three, and jumped up and bumped um, Vic, uh, shoulder to shoulder. Christos Sautis. Hello, John. Congratulations on your performance and the win. I would like to ask you. How big boost you get from uh, your performance and the win, and especially the way that you won tonight? And also, this uh, winning streak means something about your potential as a team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we're just trying to take it one game at a time and keep getting better. Uh, coach put on the board, what do we want to be? Or like, what do we think we can be? And I um, feel like this game was getting another win was perfect. I think I played solid. I mean, early on, I, I missed some easy shots, but I wasn't shooting my regular shot. I was just aiming and not shooting. Um, and then I missed too many layups. I mean, for me to be the person I am and have a high percentage rate of finishing at the rim, uh, I missed too many easy damn layups. So that's the frustrating part for me. Um, but other than that, I think we played a great game. Uh, other than the third quarter, it was very stagnant for both teams. And uh, we just found a way to try to get a lead in the fourth quarter. Ali Kampajani. Hey, John, uh, when, when in transition, how do you pick your spots and when to attack a defense uh, before it's said and when to kind of settle the offense and get going? Um, especially now playing with Victor, how do you kind of delegate those responsibilities between you and him? Well, when I'm in transition, I'm going to the rim regardless. Just trying to put pressure on the defense. And um, it's basically the person in front of me, I don't see him. I'm looking at the all the help help guy defenders and reading if I'm going to be able to finish at the rim or I'm going to kick it out for shooters. And, uh, the more we get acclimated playing with each other, the more my assistants get back to where they want to be and um, just finding these guys. But it's also, I mean, a little difficult now and different now because everybody's switching one through four, one through five. So you kind of just don't get those wide open threes opportunities and things like that. So, you know, I mean, I mean, we missed some shots, but, you know, that's what helps see would be effective also when he's able to catch live and things like that. Brian Bearfield. John, how good does it feel to just have fun again? You're all on a three-game winning streak. There's a lot of smiles tonight. Your coach was smiling. How good does it feel just to have fun playing basketball again? I haven't played in two years, so this is fun. And like I said before, um, to be somewhere where you're wanted, uh, that's the most important thing. I never want to be nowhere where I'm not wanted. And I feel like this organization wanted me here. And they show no nothing but love and trust for me since day one. Uh, they believe in me. They seen the work I put in throughout the summer. And I'm happy to be here and put this uniform on, be here for the city and compete. And uh, I got bigger things I want to do off the court to give back to the community. But I have a great group of guys, man. We all hang out a lot. Um, something I never really got the opportunity to do with all my teammates before in D.C. 
and we have great camaraderie. We like to hang together. We like to kick it. Um, we can't really do too much but sit in a hotel and talk trash or play video games, but it's fun. We enjoy being around each other, and we enjoy coming to work every day. Neil Delau. Hey, John. Uh, congrats on the win. You know, we saw some of pretty vintage stuff, the steal, the left-handed jam, the behind the back. You had the three at the end in Brad's face. Just how good did that feel, given that, you know, you feel slighted by this organization? Felt great, man. You know I mean, like I said, man, Brad's my brother no matter what. And I know how difficult it is to guard. I just want to take on the challenge to guard when I have opportunities, and he did the same. Um, we competed every day in practice. Like I told him, keep being yourself and keep leading. Um, everybody knows who Bradley Beals is in his lead. I didn't know before he's leading the league. He's scoring for a reason. Um, I knew he could be that type of player, and I'm happy to see all the progress he has made. Uh, to this day, everybody still want to make it like we don't like each other. Um, we won't pull to talk to players after the game. I take my fine. That's like somebody I call my brother outside of basketball. And um, I didn't mind going over there and dapping him and, and telling him how I felt. And, you know, I definitely see him in February when we go there and play in D.C. Brianna Holmes. Yeah, John, kind of going off of that, in the DMV, we were able to see your interview with Chris Miller. Um, were you able to talk to Scott Brooks today? I know with all the restrictions, probably not. But after this win, is it kind of like you just want to move on or were you able to speak with him? No, nah, I've been moved on, you know what I mean? Once I got traded and went to the, the new team I went now, um, guys have my number, I have those guys' numbers. If they wanted to talk to me or reach out to me, they had the opportunity to. Um, it's almost two months since that has happened. And it is what it is. It's a part of life. It's a part of business. Uh, I'm not mad at those guys, upset with those guys. I know uh, it's a part of business. I've seen people get traded all the time. Um, it's nothing that I can dwell on. Uh, but I definitely want to leave it in the past. We got this one game out the way. Uh, I definitely don't want to talk about it no more until I go there because that, that'll probably be the emotional game uh, when I get a tribute video video and uh, get to walk around, uh, hopefully see different places I've been through for the last 10 years. So other than that, I don't want to talk about it anymore. We'll take two more. Kellen Sung. Hey, John. Yeah, just kind of going off that too, I, I know we've been asking a lot of questions about your time in D.C., but you know, Chris Miller was saying during the broadcast that you do watch the Wizards games, that you do kind of, you know, watch your, your old teammates. Is that, do you keep, you know, watch those games and keep tabs on kind of your old teammates? Um, yeah. I don't have a problem with those guys. You know what I mean? They ain't do nothing wrong to me. And then, like I said, Brad's a, a talented basketball player. So outside of being my brother, who wanna, who wanna wanna watch a guy like that that performs on a high level every night? I definitely wanna see him play basketball. Yes, I watch the games. Um, me and TB have a relationship. I want to see him do great. Me and Ish go back to Ben and North Carolina together. Um, definitely Jerome went to the one of the high school that I went to at one point in time. And then Matthew, you know what I mean? Garrison Matthew, you know what I mean? We pretty cool. He said, man, he missed me. I mean, that was pretty interesting to hear after the game. And I told him I wish you the best of luck. I mean, I said, keep playing well. I'm happy you got the opportunity to be on the team, not a two-way guy. Then go make yourself some money. You know, I think he's proven a lot of people wrong. There's always room for growth, always room to get better. That's our first time playing together ever. So um, it was definitely an adjustment trying to figure out, you know, where I'm, my spots are at, you know, uh, where he, he's getting his shots, where I'm getting my shots, um, where I'm playing with the ball, where I'm playing off the ball and vice versa. So um, it'll continue to keep getting better as the year goes on. We didn't have no training camp, no time to get used to each other. So it's a process, but uh, we competed and we're going to compete all year long. And that's one thing we definitely share and have in common is we want to win and we want to compete at the highest level. So um, all the other all the other stuff, all the little things will come. We'll, we'll definitely continue to build the chemistry and continue to learn each other and each other's games as we continue to keep playing. But the mentality will be the same. Did it feel different in those last few minutes? Yeah, it, it just felt like we was, you know, feeding off each other, playing off each other, um, getting in the lane. Um, driving, kicking, finding guys, um, doing what we do best. So um, we just got to continue to build on it. Thank you. Mark Berman. Mark. Yes, sir. I'm getting, give me one second. I'm almost ready. <laughs> Caught me off guard coming to me so quick. Hey, Vic, how are you? How you doing? Um, the, the, your, your general manager, Rafael, said on the radio uh, today that, uh, Let's see here if I get it. He said that uh, 
he's a guy that you'd like to, you know, it's early in the process, but that he'd like to see you here long term, that kind of thing. He, he said early when you first got it, he was hoping it was a long term marriage. How do you look at that right now in terms of the, your long term future? Um, it'd be tough to say right now. Um, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but, you know, I'm just taking it one day at a time, enjoying myself, enjoying the ride, um, continuing to build a camaraderie and chemistry with this team. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the year, I reevaluate. Um, but for now, I'm just taking it one day at a time. I'm enjoying myself. Um, so far, the experience of Houston has been great. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to continue, like I said, to embrace every day um, and um, control what I can control. Um, go out there and compete at the highest level. Um, and then when it's time to talk business and, and figure out business stuff, I, I'll do that. But in the meantime, I'm just trying to stay in the moment. Thank you. Brian Bearfield. Big, you scored 10 points in the fourth quarter. What was it about the fourth quarter that got you going? Um, every fourth quarter gets me going. It's just, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's been trained to no matter what the – You've done the first three quarters. The fourth quarter is like a whole new game. And you just got to, you know, go out there and and, and and win the ball game. It's all about winning. So, um, and then, you know, I got my legs under me a little bit in the, in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, I felt like in the first three quarters, things were a little short. And, you know, I didn't really get enough lift or whatever the case may be in my legs. But, you know, as the fourth quarter started going, I started catching a little rhythm. But, you know, I just got to continue to keep keep being aggressive, keep being decisive, um, and staying in the moment. And if I do that, I think everything else will continue to take care of itself, and it's only going to get better from here. Won't always be perfect, but it will get better, for sure. Christo Salte. Hello, Victor. Nice shirt. Thank you. I'd like to ask you, how, how big boost you get from uh, the win, and especially with the, your second half about your effort on defense? and. How excited you are to share the court with uh, Joe and what could we expect from you? Um, you know, uh, we can be a very special uh, uh, defensive team. Um, and me and him, you know, kind of set the tone with that in the backcourt. We can be really special if we continue to do that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to play with him. It's funny, we, I'm sure if you ask him, he'll tell you, but we, we, work, we worked out in the same facility for the same guy in the summertime, uh, man, you know, it would have been, it, who would have thought, you know, we would be here playing with each other. You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe it had crossed our mind, maybe it hadn't, but the fact that it's it's kind of in fruition and, and, and it's actually happening, it's kind of bizarre, but we enjoying it. Like I said, we still getting used to each other, um, but as far as basketball goes, but, We've already been cool before now, so it makes it that much easier. And we're going to be patient with each other's games, and we're going to continue to keep figuring out each other's game. But I know he's aware, and I'm aware, too, we can do something really special here. Um, and that's what we'll focus on doing. Jonathan Fagan. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on that. Uh, when was that, that you guys were working out together? At what facility was that? In the summertime um, at, at Core Fitness um, in Miami. This summer. Yeah, this summer. This summer. This past summer. We both was, were rehabbing there, trying to get stronger, trying to get ready for this year. And then, what was it, four, two, three, four months later, we in the same backcourt together. So uh, we are both familiar with that chip. And, um, um, and we both uh, have something to prove. Um, and uh, we know that that – you know, the only way to, to prove that is winning. Um, and, and that's what we're focused on doing. Um, we're going to take it one day at a time, one game at a time, obviously. Um, you know, it's not always going to be perfect, but um, our mentality, like I said, can't change. Um, and you know, I look forward to continuing to build something here. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to the future. Thank you. And last question, Brian Bear Phillips. Victor, you came here um, during a time of transition, uh, transition and adversity, and um, now you all on a three-game winning streak. So, how good does it feel to see you know just your teammates smiling and having fun? Um, you know, it's, it's it's great to see. Um, you know, basketball is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy it, and when you play hard, you play together, and you win. Um, it's hard not to have fun. So, 
but we just gotta, you know what I'm saying, to just continue to keep building. You know what I'm saying? Um, can be satisfied, three wins in a row is great, but there's still more to do, still more work to be done. Um, you just gotta stay even keel. Uh, stay even keel and um, you attack every day with the right mindset and um, everything else will take care of itself.